everybody. We are coming to you live from Cincinnati, Ohio. And um, we are just gonna let it rip, live and unfiltered. So what do you wanna talk about? <laughs> not to put you on the spot. Seriously. But, so if you, you may not remember this, but Holly helped me do a series on um, when I released my single, my latest single, which unfortunately has been, what, three years ago? Yeah, I need to get some more music out there for you guys. But anyway, um, I was, it was called Mr. Nightmare, and we were talking about the seven signs of unhealthy relationships, and we were shooting one video for each sign, and she, sign of unhealthy relationship, and she and I have been talking about getting back together and finishing that for like years, but it doesn't mean we're going to do it today. <laughs> But we do tend to, she is one of my best voice students, and I have to be very careful. We have to be very careful because in her lesson, where she's paying me to <laughs> take her to the next level vocally, which by the way, you're doing amazing. Well, thank you. <laughs> we have to not get on these subjects. So we're saving it for you today. And we're just, if you guys have any subject that you'd like us to address or you're in an unhealthy, or um, dysfunctional relationship, you have questions, just post them here. We're kind of experts on it. Unfortunately, <laughs> lots so, of experience. Yeah, so we, <laughs> we've been in the really crazy from everything from narcissistic to um, abusive to healthy. So we kind of know stuff. Wait, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, hmm. so. I like, why don't you tell a little bit about your journey and then you can pass the ball to me when you're ready. Oh. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I didn't realize the dysfunction I was in until I started getting into more and more dysfunctional relationships. Common. <laughs> so you just see yourself and then it's like you get out of that relationship and then you're back into a, you know, a new relationship and it's the same pattern. And the why do you pattern. think we do that? Um, I, well, now I realize because I had it's a pattern from, at least in my mind, in a pattern from childhood that it's I was familiar. in. It's familiar. It's, it's comfortable. comfortable. It's the problem that I know, so I think I can I can fix it this time. Because you are an awesome fixer. I, I am an awesome fixer, but I can't fix other people. Right. I can only fix myself. Right, we've given that up. <laughs> we, we don't do that. Yeah. So, Continue. Well, so, no, so I've been in horrible relationships. Unfortunately, um, married three times. The first two, the first one was very physically abusive. Um, and the second one was more mental. Mm -hmm. And then the third one, um, which I'm still in, which I believe every marriage goes through oh, phases. My. Yes. <laughs> come on. We kind of came to a come to Jesus. Uh, I don't know how many years ago now. Well, because we're people. Several, right, right. right. And I found myself in the same pattern. I was shocked. I'm like, oh yep. my gosh, what am I? What? I did it again. I did it again. <laughs> but this time, I actually had someone that was willing to change and grow with me. And we've made a really healthy relationship. Right there now. it is. Okay, so men, if you're looking for the perfect woman, she doesn't exist. And women, <laughs> if you're looking for the perfect man, he doesn't exist. And I'm going to say, I thought I found him once. And he ended up to be a narcissistic deceiver who stole all my financial security so listen to your friends your friends are gonna know your mother's gonna know it's just not a good thing to be in <laughs> sorry I was trying to see if I can watch the it's okay it is live and unfiltered <laughs> so I'm looking to see if there's any questions out there um, any of you so again feel free to post um, I'm really sorry that you went through that because you are an amazing human as everyone is and has the potential but this girl here she's really gifted in so many areas and um, I mean I feel the same with you but it's really hard but on the other hand I hope that whatever I've gone through I can use to help other people and that's what we're doing today so um, yeah so I see you're passing the ball. So me, yes, I am on my third run as well. Um, being raised in the church, that was a really shameful thing. And divorce was like, oh no, you know, the unforgivable sin. It kind of felt that way. 
So I stayed for a long time in a sexually abusive, um, when they asked me what it was, I could name about everything in my different relationships, which even started in high school, where I just surrendered who I was to please the other person so I could get the love I thought <laughs> I could get by not being, not asking, being a person. <laughs> <laughs> which is the name of the next song that's going to come out person. But anyway, eventually. Bobby Huff's going to help me with that. I hope you're watching, Bobby. You're an amazing <laughs> producer. Uh, people, just people trying to find our way. Love you, Matthew. Can't, look, can't wait till we do voice lessons. I promise there's no therapy. <laughs> we have to do that on a separate time. I will totally work on your voice. So, yeah, my biggest thing was... I, being an artist, artistic person, highly feeling, highly passionate, um, wasn't aware that I wasn't living in reality. <clears throat> so I had this fantasy, I think a lot of young girls do, you know, about the guy, he's going to complete me. Oh my gosh. Poor guy. <laughs> Where's that guy? <laughs> anyway, that he was going to complete me and fill this empty hole that I had in my gut from just um, have, being alone so much as a child. Um, I had great parents, don't get me wrong. That's a whole other story. But they were very busy in the church and very busy in the community with doing music and helping people. So nothing against that, but... Um, I didn't really, as a child, know how to say, hey, I feel really alone. Can you guys, you know, spend a little more time? Whatever. I don't know. I was unaware as a kid. So I didn't realize till I was maybe in my 40s that I was trying to fill this thing with crazy stuff, you know. But, um, yeah, so I thought if I just got married, and I remember being 11 years old and wanting to get married. <laughs> fantasy I had no idea what marriage even was right <laughs> we'll get to that later but if I could just get married I'd be happy and I wouldn't feel I wouldn't hurt anymore uh, so <laughs> I started being with guys um, having boyfriends when I was 11 and church camp <laughs> 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 then we would write back and forth and it would be an awesome thing but, you know, long-distance relationships at 11 years old, that's a little tough. <clears throat> anyway, um, so I, I didn't get married till I was 20, but I really put a lot of demands on that guy, and, and it was not, I didn't even think. I, we sang together, we did music, it was my fantasy, right? So I thought this was just going to work out. I was really ignorant and um, about what a relationship entails, what it is, and how to even wait for or pick a mate I was just lonely um, so not to hack on him but um, I guess what I want to say is that that didn't fix anything I've seen some more am I seeing more comments no questions comments bring them bring them people we are not afraid we are not afraid <laughs> to put it all out there because really the only thing you can do with junk of your past is hopefully use it to help someone else your story you know, can help someone else. And my pastor, Rick Warren, says you're only as sick as your secrets. <laughs> Not that we have one. to tell the whole world today, but it's very true. You're only as sick as your secrets. And, um, yeah, I'm rambling because that's what I do <laughs> on live. But hi, Cindy. I miss you. I miss Daryl. Mm, that's another story. So, anyway, um, I thought I needed to find this romantic, amazing person to fill all the holes in my life. And it just got me in the worst trouble. Um, I did meet a guy like that, and end up he was like a real deceiver. Um, and I didn't see it. At that time, he was flag number one. He was living with his mom, and he was in his 40s. And... Um, I kind of dug him out of that. I bought a house for us. Um, he would cook meals. He was an amazingly romantic person. But once he acquired all my money, all my possessions, he left with another woman. So he cheated. Um, now, the good part about that, you say, what? Because I want to hear, <laughs> hear your good part, too. Oh, yeah. The good part of all that was I realized, oh, my gosh. I can't live alone. I can't be alone. I'm willing to like 
go down the toilet just to not be alone. That's really sick. I need help. So that was a big wake up call. And if you talk about it like in Al-Anon or AA or SA or any of the addiction um, groups, Celebrate Recovery, whatever, it's called hitting bottom. So what's really cool is God let me hit bottom. You know, he didn't have to, but he didn't stop me. Somebody said, well, of course he won't. No, he could. He could have made me so sick to my stomach because he's done that with other things. Just the Holy Spirit in me has been like, no, 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 no. I did hear a no, but it wasn't a no, 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 no. <laughs> so me being the risk taker I am, I went for it. Anyway, hitting bottom made me realize that I needed help. And the main thing was to live in reality. And that it's okay. You know, as a serenity prayer says, being reasonably happy in this life, you know, and supremely happy in the next. Instead of trying to get all of my, uh, you know, it was just living in Crazyville. So I went to Michigan and stayed with some people there that had a counseling center and a church. They took, it was just amazing how God put all that together to help me see what in the world. And it was basically a really deep codependency. Yeah. Let's talk about codependency. where that goes. <laughs> Where's the, <laughs> where does that go? I can fix it. I can do it. Mm -hmm. I, Make everybody happy right. while right. you... And it's your responsibility to make everyone happy. And I think it takes a while for that to catch up with you. Maybe not everybody. Any comments out there about codependency? I'm looking. Um, I didn't realize it. I didn't realize it. It took a while for that to catch up with me. And then I'm like so empty from just give, 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 give. But it's funny because from the perspective of the other person, they don't see that necessarily right. and it could be a healthy person or unhealthy I mean in my relationship now um, I put off that that I don't need anything I don't need help I like I have put on this strong persona mm. which was good right. I am strong right but then it was like then there was no one to support me there was no one like because but I didn't realize I was projecting that out right so sometimes we we do everything and we think and we're like and we we but we don't ask for help you know right. what i mean so then we like think right. well they're they're just an asshole which sometimes they are right um but sometimes it's our own patterns that we have to look at and say well how am i projecting that mm -hmm. and not that it's my fault but it's just how how you know like right we said from our childhood and what do i need to do to um say hey i need help hey yeah. i need your love hey i need this mm -hmm. when did hard. you when did you start being no noticing or starting <laughs> being able to do that or did you like I for think me there was, I, I hit bottom yeah and then i'm like oh <laughs> there was increments <laughs> but it was actually with my mother of all people ah. which was good um when i wanted to go home for my dad's 85th birthday and this is like five years ago. I was in my early 50s. And she said she forbade me to come home because mm -hmm. there was nothing she needed me to do for her. Ooh. And that was like a mommy. real... Mommy, I love yeah. you, mommy. I was a wake-up call. I'm like, <laughs> why do I... What? Oh. I was like, oh... Oh, this every is what time I go home, this is right? what my relationship this is. This is what we have. This is what it is. And this is what wow. relation, What I've done with every other relationship is wow. take care to do, the, you know, and I... And you are good at it. I am good at it. <laughs> I mean, I think you're And I like to help people, but... <laughs> but, yeah. But, I, well, I, there was a big key that I actually got in the Bible study once. Um, I used to do things so that I could be loved. Yeah. And now... Sure. I know I am loved. So I can do things. It's a mm -hmm. total. I'm not mm -hmm. doing it to get love. I'm doing it because I'm loved. Um, so it was a it was a total change of mind. So now I don't feel obligated to do things. But when I feel like it, you know, and I really have to. Le I learned. I had to learn how to listen to my gut. Like, yeah. If if it doesn't feel right to do it, then I need to step back and really question my motive. Am yeah. I trying to get love here, or am I doing this because I'm? gifted and loved right and this is it's, it's, probably a big question 
So feel free to say that's <laughs> taken too long to answer, but how did you get, do you remember how you got to that point from feeling like you had to do? It was like, that big wake up. It was like, like okay. again, not, not only with my mother, but then, you know, so then I start questioning things and then with Jim, my husband, who I love and who we have now a great relationship. Hi, Jim. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Um, it was a big wake up call that like, oh my gosh, I'm in this same pattern. Yeah. And you know, when you're in your fifties and you're like mm. seeing these, I finally, and you know, it just, yes. things that just start happening over and st as soon as you start to become aware then you see it. Oh, it's in that relationship. It's, and yeah, it's it wasn't just everywhere. spouses. Right. It was everywhere. Right. My friends. Like everywhere, mm -hmm. I was like, I need to change my whole. I I had it. It was hard, mm -hmm. but I, I knew. I guess one of the things I realized because people would say, you know, Lean you're in. so strong, <laughs> yeah. you're so strong, and I never feel strong. But once I realized I was strong, yeah, then I could. I I don't know, and also my therapy therapies. Mm -hmm. Yay. Awesome. Yay. <laughs> with the right one anyway. the right therapist <laughs> the right therapist um i realized my strength and where it was coming from and it's gradual though it's hard cool. did you find like for me i just found myself getting ultra sensitive like really hurt and i'm like why is this bothering me more now and it's like it just worse and worse i guess kind of like an open a sore that you don't uh, something you don't put you don't deal with and it just gets worse and worse that's kind of where I was too. I'm like, man, I'm like becoming more sensitive and more hurt over the years. And that's when I was like, hmm, something needs to be looked at here. But any comments I can really add? <laughs> Hi, Cheryl. Yes, yes. Yep. Feel free to share your wisdom with us too, Cheryl. Miss you. Hope you're taking good care of yourself. Hello, Mulata. <laughs> Thanks for picking up my packages while I was gone. <laughs> Steve is there now. So anyway, um, yeah. So the journey from unhealthy to healthy, and I think it, it's not really ever over, but you get to where at least you're not making choices to be in those things. And that's really what we're talking about today, how, how you get there, number one, for me, like I said, I wanted, I was being an artist and a very passionate person living in fantasy seemed like that's how life was, you know, the man's going to come and sweep me off my feet and, you know, money's going to just fly in and it kind of did. Um, anyway, in the beginning, <laughs> then, I had to, <laughs> then I had to market and work and connect a little later, but, um, so coming out of denial, we hear that word a lot, denial. Um, scary. Mm -hmm. It's scary because then you're look. You have to really look at your patterns and look at your feelings. Oh no, which I have lots of feelings. Like I said, if those of you that are watching are highly emotional, <laughs> charged people like me, there's a lot of feelings there, and so learning to 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 be led by that, but yet not controlled by it. Oh my gosh, that's deep. We can't get into that. <laughs> It's like hours and hours. We're already on how long we've been on, but um, that's the beauty of live. We can keep going. Um, <laughs> or not. <laughs> so reality is not scary to me now. Um, it's good. In problems and relational hard discussions, as they call them, difficult discussions, really don't bother me anymore. I'm not afraid. Yeah. And, and I'm not afraid of losing. And because I too, as far as marriage, I too have a person now that I am married to who I can talk to and doesn't throw things. Uh, who I can talk to who's owning all of his issues so we can kind of work together because we are complete opposites. Yeah. Complete opposites. And so there's a lot of things I do that get on his nerves and a lot of things he does that get on my nerves that we actually until COVID, <laughs> until <laughs> quarantine in California, we didn't realize, but we got to, I tell people, so we'll be almost married five years. We'll be married five years in October. I tell people we've been married at least 25 or 30 years now after COVID because we were, we were together all the time and those things were clashing. And instead of, you know, divorcing, we already made the choice. We don't use that word. Instead of that, you know, we, we pushed in and it was hard. 
to looking at my stuff he looked at his stuff and that's what we have what I have now and so I mean I recommend that if you're dating someone and you can't even talk to them about things that you know that are bothering you or, hurt, or if they hurt you <clears throat> and you can't talk about it run the other way right is that would you say what is some advice for people to not get into those how do they know how will I know if he I think... really loves me <laughs> Well, that's not the issue, but how will they know, you know, how did you know? I think, you know, the one thing before you like turn the other way is lean in. I, you said push in. I, yeah, yeah. I use the word lean in, lean into the problem, Fe like feel it and don't like, it's like, oh, I shouldn't feel this way. Shouldn't is bad. Yeah. That's really, well, feel, why are you feeling this way? Like lean into it. What yeah. is it? What's the cause? I think the more yeah. you lean in and get to the root of the problem, because we are we are not, I think you have to be in the present, but we are not just the present. We are present with all our past life yeah. in, that comes into the, our present is all our past. I've had a long if that past. that makes any sense. <laughs> yeah. I know, but that's in our present now. So you got to understand what happened in the past. So lean into those feelings of, I need to leave, leaving it, or, you know, when you're like ready to like, ready to leave and, you know, super march triggered. out. Super, super triggered. triggered. When you're triggered, that's like. <laughs> That is a key Ooh. sign to say what in my past is causing this. Because mm -hmm. a trigger, irrational behavior is a time, a wake up call. And I've learned that mm -hmm. over time. It's like, oh, I was just triggered. Mm -hmm. What caused that? And start asking those questions. And hopefully you're with the spouse that too. It's like, oh, you yeah, were just triggered. Can you, you know, what is it? Yeah. Lean into that feeling. What are you feeling? Yeah. Because that's the only way you're going to get over it. Mm -hmm. You can't just say, oh, I shouldn't feel that. Right. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. So the dance that my husband and I uh, do that we have been able to identify during COVID, because we were <laughs> COVID, dancing together yeah. a lot, is he, I, um, so I, when I would get triggered, I get aggressive and loud and, you know, if I'm not catching it. And he tends to pull away. So I'm out here trying to, ah, and the more loud I am and the more ah, I am, he's pulling into his shell. And, and so we've been able to identify that. And we now work on that, which for me, I mean, I'm scary to him, <laughs> to the world when I get like that. So I kind of watch that I don't get scary, that I stay in a place where if I'm going to be scary, I go out the front door. I say, hey, I'll be back we can, when I can, you know, not feel like throwing something. Because I'm telling you, I'm a feisty girl, and I have to own that, right? So if I can't do it, which COVID was bringing out the worst in me. I don't know about you, but I felt like I was, like, stuck in a little cage and rawr, let me out sometimes. So, so I will just go. And I need to go and get that out and then come back and treat him with respect because that's not respectful and he was really pulling away and that then triggers the abandonment in me oh, yeah. right yeah so it was just not good so it was really a fun time woo for us to get with counselors and identify that pattern again because I say again oh, yeah, yeah. because it's really it's is a process it's a constant pattern. I yeah. think just now we're where we can not get in that dance but we can identify it and even laugh about it I say that because we're not perfect, you know, after this. And he's so, in California right now, in Ohio. <laughs> it's easy to say, I'm not there. <laughs> Thank you, yes. Living in reality. But, yeah, what about you? Do you have, is there something like that? And and probably I could say that's in a lot of, that was in a lot of my relationships, except I was worse with my husband, is husband's. Well, I think, yeah. You know, but fight or flight was a big thing. And I, tend yeah. to run or scream. <laughs> I don't know. I think we learned fight or flight that you brought that up. That's interesting because <laughs> there's fight, flight, but there's actual freeze. Oh, a, that's right. Because of people that have been through trauma. And I didn't realize that was a normal reaction for traumatized people. That, yeah, you're the right. the freeze. And the that's freeze, why I, the freeze. I would do the freeze. I'm a, Is that the same as avoidant behavior? It's it's disassociation. Disassociation. I knew I was familiar yeah. with it. Right. I know you, you know. Gotta, I know you know. You gotta use those <laughs> it's words. Like this isn't me. I'm not in the present. I just gotta oh. like if I'm just quiet. Like you know, like if uh, what the reaction? Like a bunny rabbit will just freeze, uh -huh. but it senses danger. Right. And that's basically I just 
mind out. Um, were you ever driving down the road and you went, you got someplace you don't even know how you got there <laughs> when you were troubled, or is that just me? Dangerous. <laughs> Probably more dangerous like me. But I'd be like ruminating over an right. argument. Oh yeah, okay. I because we that. couldn't deal with it. You know, we wouldn't deal with it because you know, you just know. You know, you don't even know how. Because the person's irrational or you're irrational. So I'd be driving, I'd, get, I'd arrive at the bank and be like, oh, was I headed to the bank? I don't know. <laughs> Disassociation. Yeah. But um, I interrupted a really no, good flow. I, Go I, ahead. I, 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 I like, think, <laughs> please get <laughs> Come back. <laughs> well, 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 this is kind of on, but not. I think COVID, you're either going to get closer or oh, break up. Yeah. Because you're all the little issues and all the minor deep, you know, things that bother you all of a sudden like slam hit hard and the positive thing I told my husband this too is we're kind of prepping for retirement because a lot of people mm. they get to retirement and then they separate that's true because now they have to be together all the time and it's right. hard it's a it's yeah. a transition anytime yeah. you change it is a transition um so it's it's I, I think it's been a really good process mm -hmm. actually COVID to sit to mm -hmm. be together a lot and to really figure out you know what works what doesn't work mm -hmm. and um yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah for me it was learning to live in reality which I'm finally doing and I like it <laughs> it's hard sometimes but having the hard conversations and um, for you if you could put it in a I think um, really a lot of being able to set the boundaries, boundaries. In, a in a relationship, Thank you. especially when you're together is here, you know, this is what I need. And this is, you know, setting those limits and what you and it, being able to say what I need. And that's OK that I have needs. OK, and while you're on that. So there's some really great resources by Henry Cloud. Look it up. He has every kind of boundaries book. He has a book called Boundaries. He has boundaries in marriage, boundaries with your children. But Henry Cloud, he even has a live um, broadcast. Where and he's uh, he's licensed. Anyway, he has a live broadcast on Facebook too. But look him up for boundaries if you're wondering what is that and is that even okay. Um, that's a good resource. What other resources can we leave them with today? I'm reading. I love the um, podcast with Drew Pruitt. Uh, oh yeah, the brain something. Yes, I have to look at. She's it up. got it's a very, great it, podcast really for you guys. Good. It's so good. And then anything. Um, so something that really helped me was um, learning about plasticity. That you can reprogram. I hate to use that word because it makes it sound like a robot, but it's about redirecting the trauma loops in your brain or just the patterns that get there through trauma um, or abuse or just unhealthy things that you might be born with so you can literally the mouth is very powerful so if you wake up every day and you're like I'm gonna have another horrible day oh my gosh I'm so ugly who's gonna even look at me or you start into that or like with COVID I've lost so much money how am I gonna make it well if you start into that when you stay on it, your brain literally makes grooves. It creates a pathway. And um, identifying those, I have books that are really good with that, that identify those and then help you to undo those and get healthy pathways into your brain so that it won't, the thought process won't just naturally go to what it's used to. Yeah. Ooh, I gotta think of the name of those books. Mine was EMDR therapy that helped me. Right. That's a my lots brain. of money. I, was, <laughs> I, I, had, there, of I money. had insurance covered by <laughs> So I actually was so bad off. I did that. I didn't do anything. Oh, really? I think now it would. Yeah. But back when I first tried it, it was just like, I was a, completely disassociated. I couldn't even come into the place where it, it helped. And I paid a lot of money. But okay, I will I will post the name of the books because it's not coming to me. But there's literally, oh, what is it? You can work through the workbook. I've given it actually to a lot of people, but it's not coming to me today. The podcast is, by the way, The Broken Brain. The Broken Brain is fantastic. It is really good. Yeah, check that out. That's all they need to know, or do they need to know the guy's name? Drew Pruitt, but Broken Brain, you'll. Drew Pruitt, Broken Brain. Okay, any other resources we have for you? Okay, I love this. 
We have a comment from Cheryl. Never settle for less than God's best for you. And yes, I know. I had shared the thing about divorce was not an option because of being in Christian homes. She's sharing that. Um, yeah, and you know, I had gone to counselors that valued marriage above people. And they, early on, and I know the church is way more aware, and I love, I love um, the church we go to because they started a whole thing called Celebrate Recovery. They understand. They te teach. They, Rick Warren has some real, like, real messages for real people. And so does my friend John at his church. There's a lot of, it's changed. But there are still some churches that are like, never, never, never divorced. And these women are being beaten. They're being um, abused. And some of them even get killed. But, hey, they did a divorce. So their husband murdered them. <laughs> But you know, hallelujah, <laughs> praise God, they stayed true. No, you, you've got to get help. And if that person is going to continue to be an abuser, you have to get away. And if separation and working through things is not going to happen, you don't go back. You don't go back because you don't know if you're even going to make it through or he is going to, you know, completely beat the crap out of you. And kill you. I mean, I've seen it happen. I have seen this. So she does bring up a good point, though, because I think. Um, Thank you, Cheryl. <laughs> you should be making the pers the your spouse the best version of themselves, and they should be helping you become the best version of yourselves. And right. sometimes when we get involved in relationships, we get all emotional. We think we should be able to do more. We think we should be able to help. There's the and, shoulds. Right. Exactly. But the question. And it's a very objective question, I think, is are they helping me become a better person? Am I helping them become a better person? And if one of those answers is no, mm. is there anything you can do to change it? And if not, and but it, put, it objectifies it. It makes it a lot. It takes the emotion out of it so you're not feeling like, I could be doing more. It's yeah. like, well, should you be doing more? Because this guy is not doing anything to make you your mm -hmm. best version of yourself. That's really good. So That's really the like best that takeaway thought. right there. <laughs> Lean in. It's the best takeaway. And it takes you out. It took, puts you in the observer. Yeah. It puts you in the first Instead of the emotionally role. charged right. person right. losing their mind. Right. Or losing control. And that is a super helpful thing. Yeah. You just I've, I've say more. Yeah. I like how you're saying that. I mean, I don't know. I have a nice hat, but you're talking, making a lot of sense. <laughs> so that was good. Okay, we're looking for any more questions or comments before we close out. And then I'm going to make little videos of this so that um, I can upload it on YouTube as well. So my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Shelly Rusk Music. Lots of interesting things there. And relaunching just our relationship talks. Holly and I raw and unfiltered we never know what's going to come out of our mouth we don't plan it um, we're just sharing our experience from the unhealthy to the healthy because we have done it all <laughs> okay I'm looking one last time uh, so glad to see you too awesome uh, hi Denise hi Sherry there you are hi Sue hi Lily and the rest of them are up there we have to scroll without knocking the camera over Yep. Hello, everyone. Hi, Sarah. Oh, yay, Sarah. I hope you're feeling better because this has been a tough one. Um, on the on coming to Indy on Wednesday, but Crystal and I have an all day recording session at the lodge. So I don't know that you're feeling up to meeting us for lunch. It's crazy. But if you and Martha wanted to, we could. OK. Hi, Donna. We could talk. I'll text you about that. Hello, Malik. Amit. Amit, Amit, Telegram King, woohoo, hello, I don't know you, Brett, Cindy, we talked, Matthew, thanks for your input to the program, anybody else have anything to say before we sign off, um, it's been a long yeah. talk, glad to be back, <laughs> glad to be back. okay, anything, right. any final words, I'm good, thank you, so thanks for joining us, and we will see you again on live and uh, unfiltered yes. <laughs> maybe we should filter I don't know <laughs> hope we didn't scare you thanks for joining and we'll see you later